Hello again! I'm so sorry there was no video last week. Um, I just didn't have the time. It happens sometimes. <laughs> but I'm back with a new video today. And here I am in the pantry and the laundry area of my second canal house. And I'm here because I, I've been wanting to make something for this um, area in the house for a very long time, but I never got around to it. Um, but I'm going to do that today. And let me show you what it is. So this is it, the humble step ladder. Uh, we've had this for decades. I don't know how old it is. Um, it could be a hundred years old or perhaps from the forties or fifties. I'm not sure, but I've always liked it. And it's a very good size and easy to handle. You can carry it and open it with just one hand. And when you stand on top of it on the little platform, um, the little handle on the side is very comfortable uh, and safe. Now this has been in the shed for the past few years and unfortunately it suffered from some woodworm as you can see here. And the slats on the platform form just broke. Um, so I'll have to do some major work on it if I want to use it again safely. But for a miniature version, I can just uh, measure it up and uh, copy it. And that's what I'll do. And by the way, if you're a regular viewer of my vlogs, you may remember these two from, when was it? June last year, I think? These are the two lambs who were born here then. They've grown a bit. <laughs> Photo bombing. <laughs> okay, so what I've done is I've taken a lot of photos with my measuring tape on there. Uh, so I can see the um, measurements on the photo um, because I didn't want to take the stepladder inside because of all the woodworm and I think it's active woodworm so I'll have to treat it and um, fix that stepladder but uh, in miniature <laughs> I have to convert the measurements so it's all divided by 12 12 because it's 12 1 12 scale so what I'll do and I've I've done um, a few measurements <laughs> and I think I'll upload when once I'm all finished I, and and the pick the, um, the measurements are correct and all that I think I'll upload it to my blog and if you want you can copy it if it's okay I mean it may be too complicated to, to draw this whole thing out but um, I'll try to do that anyway so I've taken a few measurements and the first thing I'll, I'll start uh, making is the little platform. And I was going to draw in all the little slats, but they're tiny, so I don't really have to draw them. I may have to do that if I <laughs> upload the drawing to my blog. But um, the slats are only three centimeters wide, so that's 2.5 millimeters. Uh, that's tiny. So um, very small. So I'll make those first. And this is the wood I'll be using. Um, if you remember a couple of months ago, I showed you this, this old cabinet from, what was it, the 1880s or something? It came from my grandparents' house. It was beyond rescue, um, too much to, uh, to try to save it. But it has a ton of this wonderful pine wood, which I'll be using nice grain on it fairly fine but for step ladder it's not that important but i have so much of this so i'll just i'll just pull these off and um that's the wood i'll be using it's cracking <laughs> 
that's all right. There we are. Now I've got two really nice pieces of 140, maybe more years old pine wood, which I can use. <laughs> Okay, I've cut four slats, but as you can see on the picture, there are six slack slats. Um, and this one goes over top like that. And then the two on the side uh, go there. Uh, but those two are interesting because if you look at this photo, you can see that it is a beautifully curved piece and it's much um, deeper or wider than the the other uh, slats. So I've cut a piece of wood and I've made a little drawing of um, what that curved piece looks like. So I'll cut two of those and they will fit on the sides there. And here um, I've left a little flat uh, area because if you look at the photo from the top down <clears throat> you can see that there's um it's resting on top of the other slats so um that's what that is and over here it will rest on there you'll see when when we put it together <laughs> and you've seen me do this before in other videos I just copy the design onto some tracing paper and then glue it onto the wood then stick the second piece of wood against there as well and cut the design out with a jeweler saw. So I've got the side pieces and now you can see what's going on right. So these go over here like that. And this goes on top. Well, the spacing is a little bit off, but. <laughs> like that. And they're still a little bit long. Uh, I decided to cut that off when I'm finished. So they will end up the same size as these four in the middle. And now I have to cut this part and that's the interesting part um, because that's the part where the hinge is and um, yeah I like that part I'll show you so as you can see this part in between the slats that part that is one solid piece well <laughs> it used to be solid before the before the woodworm but anyway uh, it goes through here and like I said it acts like a hinge as well so um, I'll just have to measure that up and then cut it out and make a round part on the end Okay, just a little side step here. Um, I was writing down the measurements in millimeters here and I wrote 6,6 uh, .6 millimeters by 2 by 30 millimeters. And then I suddenly realized um, that there's a difference in how we use decimal points and decimal commas in Europe versus, for instance, the US. Um, and I'll write it down here. So in Europe, and I don't know if it's all, I guess it's all European countries, but I know in, in the US it's different. And so here, if we write, if it's 6.6 6 .6 millimeters, for instance, um, we write 6,6. So it's 6,6 6 millimeters, which is the same as 6.6 um, 6 in the US. 
and some other countries. Um, that's for the metric system. So um, this is Europe and this is US. <laughs> if you write the numbers in, let's say, a monetary value, let's say it's uh, six and a half euros, it's the same way. We write 6,50. So that's euro. And in the US, you write, well, it would be dollars probably, but let's say euros as well, 6.50 euros. Um, if you make a larger number, let's say 10,000 10, uh, euros and 50 cents. Euros, 10,000. Let's do that again. Okay, I was getting confused myself. So in Europe, if you write 10,000 euros and 50 cents, it is 10,000, comma, 50. So that's 10,000 euros and 50 cents. And in the US, it would be 10, comma, thousand, point 50. which <laughs> I've always thought that was quite curious. And um, I don't know if everyone knows this, so I just thought I'd quickly uh, get that in there. And I usually do use the American system on my drawings because I figure Europeans will understand it anyway. <laughs> but um, I just looked it up and it's a bit more complex than uh, this. And... Um, here you can see Wikipedia has a whole story on it, the decimal separator, and it talks about the decimal point, decimal comma, and so it's a complex story. Um, in different parts of the world, they use different system, as you can see, a space, a dot, a comma, and um, let's see, English speaking countries, I kept referring to the US, but um, uh, British Empire, Commonwealth Nations. Um, and then there's African. And here, down here, and, and um, uh, Arabic. There's this map of the world where you can see which countries use what. So the green ones are the comma, use the comma. The blue ones use the dot, which is not just the US and other English, but that's China. India, so lots of African countries as well. And then the, the African, um, Arabic, I mean, sorry, Arabic uh, decimal separator. So, yeah, it's very interesting. Look it up. Interesting story. Uh, we might learn something. <laughs> and now I realize I'm mixing um, European system. <laughs> with uh, centimeters and millimeters with the American uh, decimal point system. I shouldn't do that. I should just stick to the um, European system. Mm. The other day, um, someone contacted me saying that my website, joshisminiatures.com, uh, was not online. They couldn't access it. And um, yeah, that's correct. Uh I decided to retire it. And I should have told you before. Um, I used to have a website, yoshibout.com. Um, that was how you got to know me mostly. Um, and that, that provider um, uh, stopped their business. So uh, my whole website uh, was taken down and that took a long, long time to build and set up and write. And this was, it was more like a diary and, but you know, there weren't that many websites out there and people liked it. But then when that one retired, I decided to start a new one and I built this one, the one you're seeing now, uh, which looks a lot nicer, but it is so much work. And I only got, um, a few pages done. And, um, you know, you have to 
get all your files and all the pictures and all the layout and you have to keep it up to date and and with all the firewalls and all these computer things that you have to do plugins and whatever um it was a lot of work to keep it up and i never even finished because I only started with a few of the pages of my first canal house and I didn't even get around to the second canal house or my room boxes. Um, on top of that, it was quite expensive. <laughs> you know, I have to pay a few hundred euros a year to to pay for the, the name and the, the website and all, all of the extra things that go with it, to protection and whatever. So... Um, I didn't have a tracker on it, so I don't know how many people actually use this website, looked at it. I, I, I couldn't tell. Um, that had to do with privacy laws. So uh, so anyway, um, I decided to retire it. <laughs> and I should, like I said, I should have told you, and I didn't. I'm sorry. Um, I still have my blog, uh, which is A Beautiful World, which is on Blogger. And I don't do a lot with it. I'm still on Instagram. I haven't been active there either. <laughs> I just haven't had time. Of course, I, I'm on, on here on YouTube. And that takes a lot of my time. So part of stopping all these other acti activity activities has to do with that. Um, and also, I, I, you know, I've been since last year... Uh, I worked for uh, Miniature in Tune, you know, the summer school in Denmark. I've told you about this before. And since this past fall, I've become the, the chairperson of the board and I've set up a new foundation. And uh, there were some problems with bank accounts. It's, it's a long, long story. It took a lot of time, but it's now all set up and, uh, you know, Miniature in Tune 2023 is is full steam ahead so uh, but anyway the website i'm sorry guys i've retired it it's no longer active it's gone disappeared forever so these are the last <laughs> last bits you can see <laughs> Now, speaking of miniature in tune and websites, um, if you go to our website here, yeah, miniatureintune.com, um, you may have noticed some, uh, if you look at the classes, some of our classes have um, open, there are some openings for students. And this is due to some, unfortunately, very sad circumstances for some of our students, uh, which I won't go into, but it has opened up a few spots. Um, not all. And I'll have to look into um, uh, the classes that are open again. But um, here in, let's see, the B classes. That one's got an open spot. This one's got an open spot. That one doesn't. This one also got an open spot. And this one as well. And also this one, Jens Torp's one, which I love doing. I love doing that. But this one, um, our teacher, Diana Meibom, uh, she taught this class last year in uh, tune as well. And my friends went there and they absolutely love this class. And... Um, uh, Diane, uh, who is an in, is a, a, a full scale artist, but also a miniature artist, as you can see, she did a. This is a. I think it's a copy of a little Rembrandt sketch in etching, and uh, she made a little video clip of the etching process, and I really loved it. So I asked her if I could share that with you on here and on social media and she agreed so let's uh, have a look at that now
Okay, let's continue with the hinge part. So I've cut that and it's two by two and a half millimeters by, it's supposed to be 33, as you can see here, and mine is a lot longer. And I've done that on purpose because um, I have to cut these parts. And uh, I know a lot of you don't have a, uh, a lathe, but you don't need a lathe. You can just use one of these for a power drill. And um, I'm going to use a Dremel. And I'm just going to put that in there, the end. And let's see where the... I don't want to make um, a mark on it. Although it's going to be underneath the, the step ladder, uh, the platform. So you won't be able to see it, but it will look nicer. So this is approximately the end. So I can put it in there up until that part. And just tighten it. more dust is coming out and then um, just you can just lay it uh, in between somewhere or mount it or hold it let's just hold it so then if you turn it on it will spin of course it's a little bit it's not quite straight so what you want to do is try and get it when it spins you see the end is moving a little bit. Try to get it in as straight as you can, uh, which can be a little bit difficult. And the longer the wood is, the more chance of it moving around. It's, um, let's see. It's better. Well, we'll see. Um, then I have to mark it, and I should have done that before. <laughs> uh, let's see. So it starts here, and then it goes into a point. So I have a straight bit and then a pointy bit. And I need a file, and then We'll see what happens. I'll hold it. Now again, I would probably do this on my lap or hold it steady with my on my lap. Um, well, I wouldn't do this. I would use my lathe probably, but uh, you can do it this way. Um, so try to keep it steady, and then I use the file to cut off the end. Again, I can't really see very much. Uh, I can see what I'm doing, but I, I, not very well, because again, uh, if I move closer, I have to move closer to see what I'm doing. And I can't because the camera is there. I keep saying this, but that's just the way it is. So let me just see what I've done. Okay, well, it's not, not very neat. Uh, okay, there's more. On one side, it has come off more than the other side. But it will work. So you just play with it a little bit and try to get that um, end cut off. Oh, not cut off, but uh, shaped like that. So um, we'll try it again. Oh, 
Ah, that's better. Um, I touched the shoulder here, so I should really do it again. Try another one. It's not centered very well. So, um, if it's not centered, like mine is not really centered, uh, you should put it back in and try again. And because I have some extra, uh, I can cut this off and do it again. <laughs> Let's see if I take it out, if there is a dent in the wood. That's not bad. Could probably put it in a little bit further. I'll do that. Now I'm going to do this off camera because then I can at least see what I'm doing. Um, but this is about what it, what you're supposed to do. Well, that's finished. Um, I messed up the first one, <laughs> so uh, but this one, this one's good. So I'm using that one. And I ended up using, um, well, you're, you're going to use a flat, a flat side of a file. But uh, I started out using this one, which is a half round file, which I, I love to work with. But um, then the shoulder doesn't get a sh the shoulder of the, of the, you know, where you're cutting it. There's a little shoulder. Um, it doesn't get a sharp. And also, because there's a round side here, it tends to jump over and then you're hitting the, the square parts, which you don't want. You want them to remain square. So I suggest you use either a square one um, and, or uh, this one, which is a flat one, also has uh, straight sides. So use that. And the other thing I thought about was, what was that? Um, Oh, yes, I remember. Um, make sure that both sides uh, are the same uh, thickness. Of, because once you put them inside the uh, hole where it, as, to act as a hinge, the hole has to be a certain size. So I decided on um, to make them one and a half millimeters thick. So uh, I kept stopping the drill looking at the size going you know starting again take a little bit more off and we're talking uh one tenth of a millimeter every time or even less so you know keep checking keep just a tiny bit checking tiny bit more measure tiny bit more so and then you end up with two sides that are the same thickness so and try to keep it central and that's the most difficult part I think anyway well um, that's it for today I'm running out of time um, uh, I can't do anything tomorrow I have something else to do so um, by the time this gets out uh, I won't have time to, to finish the whole uh, step ladder so I'll have to do that next time so that's it for today uh, thank you for watching until next time and uh, let me just finish with the other video again, the Diane uh, Maybombs etching video. I really love it. So, bye.